This is the sweet potato. It's probably the widest, least amount of rocker and thickest surfboard you will ever surf. Um, this shape is a pure groveler. It's high performance, but it's definitely a groveler. It's made for really flat waves that can be tall, but real slopey. If they're small and grovelly, that's probably how it's gonna be used most of the time. However, it is updated with a tail and bottom contour that allow for it to come off the bottom and fit in a tighter training radius in a steeper climbable pocket. So instead of it having to be a, a, a bottom turn where you have to draw it out and come off the bottom and project through that turn, there's, there's a lot more maneuverability so that you can get back up and climb more vertically uh, on your fore or backhand. The tail is a swallow tail with, with, that is pulled in to, it almost looks like a regular shortboard back here on these last few inches. And then when you get the fin set up just right in uh, conjunction with that tail outline, you're still doing high performance turns in the pocket. Kevin Schultz and uh, Timmy Reyes are riding as a thruster and they're ripping on it. And I actually, an anti-thruster groveler person that I am, really enjoy it as a thruster too and uh it has very low rocker but an even curve throughout the whole thing so there isn't a whole lot of rocker but there's never a straight spot never a, a flat area the bottom is a single concave with a really significant double barrel that runs through the whole thing so that double barrel starts up here like right where the on a on a on a bottom turn right where the very front of that rail line would in engage is the double barrel. The double barrel starts way up high, goes all the way through, and then feeds all that water through to the fins and uh, has a nice step, sort of sort of like you find in the mashup, is this real dropped off um, tail area here to eliminate some of the corky. If it's too corky and thick back here, it gets harder to tip over. And so the this generation of the sweet potato was meant to maintain the planing, the wide planing area, put a swallowtail on there and decrease the volume back there to allow for more pivot in the pocket. So it keeps the skatey down the line when you're surfing before the wave even breaks and long after it does break. But then you um, increase the pocket turns and the vertical climbs. For me, I fall in love with these kinds of shapes and spend a lot of time refining these shapes because I like to surf by myself, because I like to surf waves that are otherwise going to be not that fun. So the thing is though, when I'm watching the, the team guys come back with their clips, Kevin's doing some funny, cool, like walking around on the board, hanging five and, and riding it like a longboard. But one of the things I'm watching and most excited about when I watch these clips is they're, they're catching waves eight seconds before the wave is even broken um, and then riding them and doing turns and gouges on whitewash long after the wave has closed out um, and, the, and then Timmy's still doing tight arc turns in in the pocket and uh, on, on, on a gutless little wave that we all are especially in more day-to-day -day type surf that he that you can imagine doing and watching those guys not compromise on any of their turns, but then still being able to ride a wave that long before it would even have been broke. They wouldn't have even paddled for it at that point on the regular board. So now sizing, we have the little nugget 5.2 of Kevin Schultz. This is my 5.6. And this one here is a, my buddy's 5.8. And there's a lot of little refinements I do when I go I start with the board I, in this particular situation. I started with the board that I ride, a 5.6, and then I scale it down and then I scale it up. Right here at this point, I do a lot of changes to the volume in the rail and the rocker so that the bigger boards don't have that gross, thick nose and the clunky, big, thick rail. The whole idea is to keep the surfboard so that the bigger dudes and, and the people looking for the more volume still have a feeling of refined shape that holds and maintains the main objective of the board is to catch a ton of waves that are otherwise not that surfable or gonna not have that much speed. 
but without it becoming this big clunky giant longboard feeling uh, thing. The point is that with the sweet potato, the file as I design it and the boards I, I originally make to sample, don't just start at 5.2 or start at 5.6 and then just plug them into a machine and, and then plan on uh, having that scale happen as a result of the machine. I, I'm actually getting in there, changing the rocker, adding rocker and taking away rail volume, but increasing the volume of the overall board as I go up in sizes. If you leave it all up to the computer, you, the scaling doesn't happen. It's, it's, there's, there needs to be the element of refinement for each size as you go down and as you go up. So whatever size you end up with or decide to go for, you're getting a, a, a board that's very well refined for that exact size. That's the sweet potato. You can now ride a short board where there's long borders. You can always keep it in your trunk so you can surf the junk. That's the sweet potato.